ripe old age of 24 and started the program from scratch. Did a fabulous job. And her journey here has been tremendous. Uh, she's had a lot of successes and became one of the top programs in the country and continued that even though she had this diagnosis. Good job, Breeze. I believe it was around January. She had mentioned that, oh, I have to go back to the back to the doctors. I got a mammogram and uh, and something came back that they have to double check on. And they called her back again. Um, and I think that they had found uh, found something that they had wanted to look further into. The doctor um, who did my ultrasound and I told her, I said, you know, I'd ha I have, you know, I have had some things ultrasound before on my left side and. You know, it was kind of just cystic or fibroids, and and she's like, "This isn't a cyst," you know. So I kind of knew right there this was going to get serious. There's no way, like, there's no way, like, you kind of it, you can you talk yourself off the uh, the ledge that like, there's no way she's so healthy. How did I, <laughs> you know, who's in a, an a, you know, was an elite athlete, coach, take good care of? How am I the one who ends up with cancer? I mean, truthfully, that's how I thought. I still feel that way. I'm like, how is it me? I never realized ever before, because I'd never really been touched by it, how common this problem is. So second day of preseason, January of 2015, it's cold, the wind's blowing around the turf, my phone rings, it's a number from the hospital. I'm like, okay, here we go. For us, especially in our profession, where you're looking for solutions and you're looking for kind of like, okay, so what's the next step? What's the process? What's the solution? What type is it or what level um, and to kind of the degree? And um, I know that definitely through finding out once it was in her lymph nodes, that was kind of, I would say, the biggest gut-wrenching piece of it. When he called me, he said, okay, coach, like, this is what we've got, and this is what we're dealing with. I have the PATH report right now. He goes, and there is node involvement. So my sentinel node had come back positive, which meant, you know, obviously I was going to have to have chemotherapy. And, and that's when I really kind of lost it. I, I was like, gosh, you know, I'm really going to have to have the full Monty. I was devastated. It was really the only time in this whole process that I was devastated. He looked at me and he goes, you need to get over it if one of your players was sitting here on the opposite side of this desk from you and they were hurt, would you let them feel sorry for themselves or would you tell them to get over it and start working on getting better? And from that point on, it was really one of the, one of the biggest blessings um, in this whole process was I had a really tough surgeon who kind of gave me the business and told me what I needed to hear, not what I wanted to hear. You look at someone who's so healthy, who takes such good care of their body, works out, um, and that you view these people that are in the positions of whether it's our boss or the head coach, that you think they're invincible. But Kirsten is such a tremendous person and fighter, and you know she persevered through through her time um, with with dignity. I don't think anybody else would have done what she she did. First thing we're gonna do, ball will be rolled out five yards in front of us. There was a lot of talk about how good this year could be based on the talent and we were returning. So I think that everyone was kind of excited, um, looking looking forward to what the season, uh, the potential of the season could have. It was really hard telling our team. It was really hard telling everybody. She delivered the news with such confidence and poise and strength to us that in that moment where we were all scared, knowing that she was strong and confident, I think gave us, you know, hope moving forward in this experience with her where we really didn't know what to expect or what the season would hold and what this, you know, treatment plan would hold for her. You know, and I think for the kids hearing like that my prognosis was good and that I did catch that it was caught early was, you know, was the most reassuring thing. And I but you know, I said, "Listen, I'm not sure how it's going to impact me. I don't know how my, how I'm going to tolerate treatment." Um, even though I'm confident that I'm going to be, be good, I just don't know. And you, you guys are going to have to go with it. Kirsten is the toughest person I have ever met in my entire life. The situation as the year unraveled, um, you know, from she told us in January of last year, and then we made it to the final four that year. So those six months that we had together revealed the most toughest character I've yet to see. The, one of the most important things for me in this that year was that I knew we had a really good team. But when I got diagnosed, I said to my husband, I said, 
how am I going to do this? Like, how am I going to, this team is so great. He said to me, you wait and see, your season's going to be the biggest blessing of your life in this. And he was right. Um, the kids were amazing. I always tell them it was one of the easiest years I've coached because as, as you know, you can imagine with 35 girls ranging from the age of 18 to 22, there can be a lot of drama and there was none. I think immediately a lot of the smaller details that at times become bigger issues were really nipped in the butt um, and I think that our senior class did a great job and I think that there was um, a lot of things that, that as a, a team and as a group um, got taken care of by themselves because of, of it all being put into perspective. They talk about how like she didn't miss a beat but yet she was missing lots of beats but they didn't see that because of who she is. You really kind of have to pick your battles and you know that season our battle was on the lacrosse field trying to win a national championship and off the field was trying to be there to support our coach who has done everything to support us in all of our moments on and off the field. Once I was diagnosed and, and the people in my Duke, fam Duke lacrosse family knew about it, the moms who came out of the woodwork, I had no idea. I mean, to this day, 10 moms in our program, 10 mothers at the time who were either past, current, or future parents, 10 who have dealt with this. And I was shocked. I was shocked. I had no idea. I was encouraged because, boy, they looked normal now, and they were fine, and they made it. But I couldn't believe um, that there were that many. It could happen to anyone. Everyone has women in their lives, whether they work with them, they're, again, related to them or in a familial sense. Um, I think you have some, you always have some connection and I think that that's something where it could happen to anyone. I think it's just so important that you know, the early detection, it, it's remarkable that, that we don't have more opportunities for early detection. And to me, it seems like it would make sense, just like within some of our male counterparts have certain tests that they can kind of go through when they get into, you know, that old, those middle life to older ages. It would be, you know, think about like being able to go to your OB for your kind of annual exam and be able to have, you know, some kind of simple test other than the physical test of a breast exam or a mammogram, but some kind of, you know, biological test that would be able to give us some indication that either, you know, this is something that's coming down the pike for you, it's already in your system. Um, you know, think about the value of that. Um, tackling this before it becomes a problem and you have to endure the rigorous treatments of chemotherapy and, and radiation therapy. I, I had unparalleled support throughout this, but it would really have been nice to not have had it or not have needed it because I could have known four or five years ago when I you know, hit 40 that this was something that was coming down the pike and we could have intercepted it before then.